to the Cinderella podcast, where we watch and review every Cinderella adaptation we can get our hands on, discussing the same story over and over until we go slowly insane. I'm Liv. And I'm Talon. And today we watched my favorite fairy tale, Cinderella, from 1986, which I'm going to go ahead and call the retro anime Cinderella, Mm -hmm. because it's a retro anime Cinderella. It is. It is. And I... I wish that we could just call this the anime Cinderella, but I am very saddened to report that there are many, many anime Cinderellas, and that is not an option for us. So something to look forward to in the future. So my favorite fairy tales was a Japanese anime series of fairy tales and other classic stories. They originally released it on five VHS volumes in 1986. And then the sixth in 1990. So this is from volume three, which also has Sleeping Beauty and Snow White on it. And I'm wondering how similar those two are to their Disney counterparts, because this one had uh, some choices. This one was real similar to the 1950s one. Real, real similar. It's nice to see it going the other way, because usually you see about Disney ripping off like old school anime, like with uh, Kimba the White Lion and the Lion King and stuff like that. Um, It's nice that it's a mutual back and forth. Nice is certainly a, a word that we both know. I guess we have to start this. How does this thing open? What? What did we just watch? Okay, so Help. we start with a light blue castle on this big blue sky with this green grass, and it's a beautiful shot, and then it slowly pans over to a village, and there's this very, like, British lady voiceover. So the voice, it's not even British. She sounds very stoned. She sounds very stoned and trying to hold it together and not really doing a great job. Her voice sounds woozy. The audio in this is like questionable. It's not great. It's yeah. So we get a voiceover introduction of Cinderella and then we meet Cinderella and her father at their home, which again, looks exactly like the one in the 1950s. It has a circular multiple layer fountain in front. It has the same design. The stepmother and stepsisters watch menacingly from an above window. It's the same, but terrible. So this scene is new though this scene is new so let's describe child cinderella first so she's just a small girl type child with ringlet curls and a ponytail and her father's standing there and he's got like a page boy haircut with a mustache that's what i've got too that's literally what i've got in my notes i was trying to figure out how to describe that hairstyle but yeah page boys so we see cinderella is she bouncing a tiny bird in her hand no, so she's got her hands reached out and a, and a little bird comes by. And as this is happening, she goes, ah, oh, ha, 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 which is a weird laugh thing that they do so many times in this movie. Yeah. It became very annoying very quickly. So the bird lands on her hand and she goes, oh, father, look how tame he's become. She talks in this really breathy, high-pitched voice and it's terrible. It is. It is terrible. And I was sort of okay with it when she was a child because some children have very high-pitched voices yeah it doesn't change when she gets older though and it becomes dramatically not okay so then the father goes yes my dear animals soon recognize kindness in people and then she kisses the bird and on the balcony the evil stepmother and the two sisters just loom yep this is the only mention of cinderella being kind that we get this is also this entire film. This is also the only time animals will be important. They're, the whole mice and bird helper thing is not in this, which makes the kindness to animals bit superfluous. It was just a weird moment of them telling us something that they never show us, which is an incredibly lazy way to write something. Yeah, this this is the tell don't show Cinderella. They cut so many corners in the animation. At first I thought that okay, so when they pan from the castle to the village, I was like, what lovely art. How nice. This is gonna be yeah. nicer animation than I was expecting. They fooled me. 
I was wrong. The animation is incredibly stilted. People don't really move. It's mostly close-ups of people's faces and they don't always animate that they're talking. Mm -hmm. They do most of the time, but not always. And then there's a lot of things happening off screen. And instead of showing you what's happening, they show you like another character who's watching what's happening. And then you just get the sound effect for what's happening and them reacting to it, which is also a terrible way to show somebody a story. It is. Uh, it's, it's a terrible way. I will say the backdrops are lovely in this. Yes. I, I quite enjoyed the background art. Uh, it was very pretty. See, another nice thing. What else do you have? Um, <laughs> so moving on. So the voiceover tells us that the step family are jealous of her beauty and they are cruel and spiteful when the father is gone. And we get this very dark, weird, I have beauty in the beast scene where child Cinderella is kneeling in front of a ripped portrait of her mother in the dark by herself it's been slashed it's been slashed it's very beauty and the beast with the slashed portrait of him as a prince it's it was creepy and she's crying her eyes are all big anime tear wobbly eyes and she goes oh mother and then we just hard cut to her and her father laughing on horses doing the ah ha 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 yes should we we find out through via voiceover as we will find out everything relevant in this period of time that she does not ever tell her father about the cruelty that she receives because she doesn't want to worry him. This is like not a trait to be encouraged in children. This is something to actively discourage in children. A relationship in which a child is trying to protect the emotional health of the parent at their own risk is not a healthy child-parent relationship. No, 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 it's not. Um, we should not emulate that. We should not. So we see the father's face like really close up and he's kind of like intensely nodding. And I'm like, is he going to have a heart attack and like fall off the horse? Why are we looking at his face? And then hard cut to the graveyard. And the narration just goes, one day her father suddenly died. Okay. And we never see him again. <laughs> we have to, I have to talk about the graveyard here. And I am so sorry about this. The graveyard is made up of massive stone crosses. Mm -hmm. Okay, I hear you. Crosses live, you say. That seems like a very normal thing to have in a graveyard. No, you don't make headstones out of big stone crosses. That's not what headstones are. You have headstones or you have monuments that have crosses on top of them stone is not good when it's at those and it falls it breaks that's stupid it would have a head why isn't there a headstone why isn't there a headstone talon tell me i'm so angry about this i don't know why you think i have an answer for you i have a lot of favorite cemeteries y'all i just i like old headstones i think they're beautiful i think they're fascinating i will tell you none of them are crosses because that's not how stone works if you want it to last, which you do, because it's a headstone. Okay, I got to move on. Okay, moving on. So. So Cinderella is in the graveyard crying and the stepsisters and the stepmother are looking on from the distance and it zooms in on their faces and they're all like evil smirking. So one of the stepsisters is blonde with ringlets and the other one is red haired with like two big ponytail kind of it's, hair it's pulled like, back. She has... Princess Leia buns, but also a low pony, but frizzy. Yeah, I don't know how to describe it, but it. Ear pom -poms. She looks like the princess from the Powerpuff Girls, who whose yes. name is Princess. Yes, the the red one. I have that the stepmother looks like Samurai Jack, because she does, and um, okay, I couldn't get over it. So now she's under the complete control of her stepmother and stepsisters, the narration tells us. And she has to work all day. And the stepsisters give her the name Cinderella because she sits next to the cinders in the fireplace. Another thing that they tell us and then never, ever show us. There are smudges on her gown. We do see smudges on her gown. They never show her sitting oh, no. next to the fireplace. I oh, don't think no. they even show us a fireplace. They don't. Uh, they do show her grown up now in the kitchen chopping something she's very mechanically chopping 
something. By mechanically, I mean she is not moving the thing forwards at all. So she's just moving a knife up and down in the same spot while staring blankly ahead and not blinking. It, the it animation... was an uncomfortable scene. It looked like a bot or a mannequin come to life about to kill you. I just, I didn't like it. The animation mostly works on loops in this film. Uh, so whatever motion somebody is doing just repeats in a loop. And it's... I mean, I feel like they could have Not scooched great. whatever that was forward just a teensy bit at the end of the loop to achieve like a scooching nope. effect. Nope. Okay. So Cinderella. Just the loop. So Cinderella now is an adult, I suppose. She has long blonde hair now in a low pony tied back with a ribbon and bang. She's still very blonde. She has very large blue eyes. I know this is an anime and by yeah. default, everyone has anime eyes. But she has like extreme anime eyes and instead of a personality, whenever she's supposed to emote or have a reaction to something, they just show her eyes like glittering. Yes. Her, her pupils are so large that you almost can't see the whites of her eyes, which gives her a weirdly squirrely look. <laughs> it made me uncomfortable. It was like looking at the Fae or the Eldritch being like, you're not supposed to look at them directly. They don't like that. So we hear some kind of evil laughter and we get some small talk from the stepsisters with each other, which goes along the lines of, you know, last night's ball was really magnificent. And the other one goes, that's because you fall in love with the Count's eldest son. And she responds with, what do you mean? He is falling in love with me. Oh, really? Of course, I make an ideal wife for a nobleman. By the way, uh, gentle friends, you might wonder why we're not using the names of the stepsisters in this and it's because they aren't given names so they're just in my notes is blondie and red um yeah, correct yeah so this is a fight between blondie and red blondie by the way upon being accused of actually falling in love has put her fists up in front of her face like a boxer at the table as though she's about to go three rounds with with red and it was i wanted there to just transition to a boxing movie so this interaction was like the closest that these girls come to having a personality or like anything. doing anything interesting or yeah. just anything that makes you think of them as characters rather than part of the background. What I'm saying is this was not a high bar that this conversation set and we never reach it again. Yes, I would agree with that statement 100%. So we, we cut to Cinderella and she's out in the hall with like a food cart and the stepmother calls for her and at this point my notes go into all caps because Cinderella has a mouse voice she, she has like the this. voice she talks like this it's the whole time it's like this I have my notes that she has the voice that we needed for the Cinderella in the Mighty Mouse with the koala ears this needed to be that cinderella's voice i wanted them to switch voices so badly it's incredibly annoying i don't i don't know how else it's, to characterize it other than just irritating fortunately she says almost nothing except for yes mother she gasps a lot she there's does a lot gasp. of <gasps> oh, and, ah, and, oh. Do we think her voice is more stylized than the Betty Boop one or less? Because at least with Betty Boop, I saw what they were going for. Right? That had personality. This was much more irritating to me. Agreed. Cinderella also responds to her stepmother by calling her mother. Which Each time. Every single time, which I hated. I did not like that. That was upsetting because we've established that her mother was kind and good and that she used to cry in front of her ripped painting. And now she's calling this woman who we've been told is cruel, but we have not, to be fair, really seen anything other than you have to do chores. So I, I just, I really didn't like that. Maybe it's the after effects of having just watched Ever After, but I like the idea of her longing for a mother-daughter relationship. You're putting so much into this 12-minute monstrosity that was not there. So anyway, the stepmother goes, <laughs> Cinderella, finish the washing while we eat. And the one stepsister goes, she really ought to do everything without having to be told by mother. And the second stepsister goes, what an inconsiderate girl. 
and then we see the moon and we're done we're just no, no, done no, with we that get, scene. no 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 we don't no we don't we get no? one more line after that after that the stepmother goes and after the washing there's the table to be cleared what a weird instruction you need to clean the table while we're eating obviously the table's going to be cleared after you're eating it what are you doing it's the weirdest note i'm sorry that line just threw me i think that bothered me so much i didn't write it down on purpose of because it was like we're gonna pretend that didn't happen i'm editing it out no no you can't i forbid it i'll just i'll bring it up later so it's uneditable no i mean like as i was writing <laughs> ah, in my okay. head i was like i will edit this out of the actual movie that's already been made <laughs> It's a, it's a big house. There's so many chores you could do. And the two you come up with are washing and the thing that we're doing right now. I don't know why that hit me so hard, but it did. And, th- and, then, and then, yes, we cut to a beautiful night sky with a crescent moon. So Cinderella is just kind of looking out the window. Uh, it's nighttime. The moon is there. And she's looking at the moon with her big anime eyes. And the moon is shiny and her eyes are shiny and we get the narration telling us that when her father died Cinderella's stepmother took away all her beautiful dresses and gave them to her own daughters and Cinderella had to wear old shabby clothes and live in a wretched attic room and we sort of hear like laughter in the background. Why do we get that voiceover information? That information has basically been established or it should have been included in the chopping vegetables like a mannequin about to go on a killing spree scene it should have been included when like right when her father died and we first see her as an adult absolutely that okay. because at this point like we've seen what she's wearing and we don't care it's yeah, we, not that noticeable yeah this is we haven't even described it because we don't care yeah it's it's a dress with a ragged apron it's sort of gray you're welcome moving on it's not a very dramatic patched up kind of thing It's just she's wearing a dress and we know it's not a nice dress because she's also wearing an apron. It's drab is what it is. It's drab. The voiceover then chooses this moment to tell us that one day the palace made an announcement that there would be a ball and the most beautiful woman who attended would become the prince's wife, which was a bit of a departure from previous versions. They're being very upfront with it. They are. So we cut to the stepmother and stepsisters, and they are very happy with this news. The stepmother is giddy, saying they won't get another opportunity like this. And she spins around and she says, Thank you, dear Lord. And she kisses the invitation very girlishly. It's very uh, quaint, I guess. The animation in this moment is incredibly stilted, where she robotically lifts her hands up while she speaks then puts them down, and then lifts them up again before she spins around and kisses the invitation. It's incredibly unnatural. So we find that there are going to be 10 days until the ball. This information is absolutely useless to us, by the way. Oh, 100% useless. I was excited for 13 seconds, uh, and then I was deeply upset. So we, we find out that the ball will happen in 10 days, Blondie says that she will have the best dress made. Red announces that she will be going to buy the best cosmetics. The stepmother tells them that they will bathe in milk every day. And then she winks. And then says, oh, we're going to be so busy. She tells Cinderella to stop daydreaming and go get the dressmaker and the beautician. We see Cinderella running on a dirt road, again, very loopy. Loopy in the sense that it loops the, anima- the animation the animation is on a loop yeah it's just a dirt road she's in the middle standing of the still in one place with her legs moving and the background slowly moves behind her i thought that that was going to be the last time that happens and it's not it is not the voiceover tells us that now cinderella's busier than ever and now it's the night of the ball and i was so mad I yeah wanted- what was the point of that I don't know. I wanted there to be a scene with a beautician or a new dress or milk. I wanted there to be a scene with milk baths. That Why would you include that and then not show me that? Why would you specify that it's 10 days and then be like, and then those 10 days passed? Like for the purposes of this story, you might as well say tomorrow there will be a ball because we don't see anything in the middle. So why do we care? Maybe believability reasons that it would take 10 oh, days come to now. make a dress I'm, I'm reaching for logic with my fingernails and I'm losing 
so it's a beautiful sunset and we see the palace and then we pan to Cinderella's house and there's a carriage outside of it and Cinderella's standing outside. The yeah. stepsisters and the stepmother are in a square. They're leaving for the ball in a square. It's it's an old timey jail wagon. I looked at it and I was like, that's a carriage. And I moved on with my life. They, they do show us a carriage, but then when they animate when they show us the scene of them talking in it, it is in no way a carriage. It's just a square on the screen with bars in it, which are supposed to be fancy doors that open, but it just, because it is so flat and there are no curves and no decorations and no anything, it reads like they're in a jail wagon. <laughs> oh my God. I was dying. <laughs> so Cinderella is um, told that she must clean the whole house and to have supper waiting by the time they get back. I don't understand why you would go to a no never mind I've come we full can't. circle on it we I would also like to have a meal waiting for me when I come back from a party that sounds amazing actually yeah the stepsisters have red and blue hair feathers but that's as far as we go in terms of them looking weird or being dressed oddly they just the feathers are sticking straight up like and they're roughly the same proportional size as their heads it's so a, it's a bit it's a look it's a strong look it is it's a big feather I, no lie but it's I mean people used to wear outrageous feathers and caps and stuff it, it did not look as weird to me as it probably should have <laughs> so Cinderella goes yes mother and then she watches the carriage drive away and now it's completely night and we see the crescent moon again in the castle and that's weird because it's been 10 days since the last time we saw a crescent moon but that's fine. We're that's not, fine. We can't. Um, so Cinderella's in the graveyard with flowers, and the narration tells us because at this point we didn't know that in fact Cinderella wanted to go to the ball too. This was in no way emoted by Cinderella. She didn't look sad. She didn't look wistful. Nope. Nothing. Just big, empty nothingness. The voiceover just tells us that that is indeed the case, and then says oh poor girl and Cinderella looks up because the voiceover has entered the scene now and it is the fairy godmother I'm just going to describe her for y'all she has a shapeless dark purple dress she's very plump she has shaggy purple hair and a purple cape she looks like 12 door dwarves just knocked on her door and now she's on an unwilling adventure to go to the lonely mountain and steal gold from the dragon smog we see her later next to cinderella both standing and she is half cinderella's height this is a hobbit she's adorable she's terrifying she's a terrifying gnome hobbit and i was frightened by her okay so she tells cinderella cinderella if you do as i tell you you'll be able to go to the ball and cinderella goes oh <laughs> First, fetch me a pumpkin from the garden, then two little mice, and finally a lizard. Lizard, yeah. Back to the lizard theme. So we've got a lizard this time, for those of you counting along at home, though I don't know why you would be. So after she says that, there's a really long pause, and Cinderella goes, but why do we need... And the fairy godmother interrupts her with, I'm your fairy godmother, and I'm going to help you with my magic. Now hurry up. And I feel like she could have started out with that information. To which Cinderella responds, and flees the scene and then we pan like to the fairy godmother's face and it's like a close-up and she smiles and nods to herself and then we're in the next scene because they're not going to show us literally mm. anything that happens no. and nothing the fairy godmother just says right you've got everything i've asked for let's get on with it those are the actual words that she actually says so she swishes her magic stick and the magic word is bam which i liked so she switches her stick and goes bam okay. and we get a puff of orange and pink smoke and we get a coach which is nicely pumpkin shaped although it is blue and the inside is aggressively red i guess the lizard becomes the coachman at this time although we don't see a specific transformation for the lizard we do for the horses however the mice she goes bam again and we get the same orange and pink smoke and two horses where the mice were they have blue manes if you wanted to know that totally normal horses 
we also get this like intense like 80s zoom whoosh sound when this oh. happens oh, I, de- I deleted the 80s zoom sound from my brain <laughs> it's like a computer loading up in an 80s hacker movie yeah like well maybe a 90s hacker movie it's yeah. a very like futuristic but very old version of futuristic sound yeah retro sci-fi sound yeah cinderella continues to go Ooh. <laughs> the fairy godmother says didn't we do well next there and she points at cinderella's dress and the outline of it glows red and then it's the dress from the 50s disney cinderella but in red and pink yep like her hair's in an updo and everything it, it is identical that is also what my notes say uh the transformation i slowed it down so i could watch the whole thing slower it looks like Cinderella is being attacked by glitter mosquitoes for a while, a number of frames, just sort of pulsating around her. And then she is lined in hot pink, and then she gets a double outline in hot pink. And then the dress sort of fades into existence over her clothes. And yeah, it's it is an identical dress. Boring. And Cinderella I, goes- I, I didn't find that boring. I found that very interesting. <laughs> I, I was annoyed that there wasn't a different dress was my thing. I, I would like there to be a different dress in every Cinderella that I watch. That's fair. I would like that too. I'm just really amazed by how like on the nose the copy is. Like it's to the point where it looks like an off-brand Disney fake out that they try to like get people to accidentally buy instead of the real thing, specifically yeah. based on the confusion. It's exactly the same. So Cinderella goes, it's just like a dream. And Fairy Godmother goes, but it isn't a dream. <laughs> Thank you. Just Thank you. Amazing dialogue. I'm glad we have this dialogue instead of, you know, literally anything else. And then Cinderella goes, what a beautiful dress. And everything she says is just so inane that I have to wonder, like, is it the translation or is it just written like this? Why is everything she says just stating something that we already see? It's bizarre. So the fairy godmother realizes that she has forgotten the shoes. So she makes glass shoes and says, I hope they fit, which is a weird thing to do after she makes them, but whatever. Um, And and we see that currently Cinderella is wearing brown shoes underneath her red dress. Yeah. And they're kind of like cloggy looking. And she tells Cinderella again that she has forgotten something and that she has to be home by midnight or the magic will fade. Then as Cinderella leaves, she, the fairy godmother tells her again and calls out, remember, don't forget, which is the most useless thing to tell someone ever. Remember not to forget. Gee, thank you, Barbara. Thank you for that. And then we kind of, the the screen just has the face of the fairy godmother and that's all we see. But in the background, we hear clopping and wheel sounds. So clearly Cinderella is leaving. But instead of showing us Cinderella leaving, which is the interesting part of the scene, and like waving or whatever, we just keep focusing on the fairy godmother and her face because God forbid we animate anything that we don't have to. Yep. So then the next shot is finally of the carriage with Cinderella in it and the horses, but it's like a flat horizontal shot where the background is moving, but the carriage is stationary and the wheels have been animated to move and the horses have like four different leg positions that they rotate over and over. I missed that scene completely. That scene isn't even in my notes. It's very quick. They just show us that Cinderella's in the carriage and that carriage is moving. Wow. And then they're at the ball and there's couples dancing. How would you describe this dancing, Liv? Um, Well, they are paired off in couples, so it is a couple dance. And they are, they're um, moving, they're moving circularly in in sort of a jerking fashion. I wrote it as a, they step and then they step back. Yeah. It's clearly supposed to be dancing. I'll, (laughs) I'll give it that. It is clearly, it is clearly conveyed that it wants to convey dancing. That's the best I can go. Okay. Okay. We then get the announcer who goes, another guest. (laughs) And Cinderella walks in. 
This man is terrible at his job. Oh, good. He I... has one job to announce the presence of guests. <laughs> and all he's got is like, here's a person. <laughs> that was the best. That was the only genuine funny moment in this whole thing. And it was 100% not on purpose, but oh my God, I loved it. So his mouth wasn't animated when he said that. He just lifts his arm and they animated that, but that was too much animation for like a one-shot character. So we get his arm raising up, but his mouth is just a flat line. And instead of Cinderella walking in, by the way, we just pan slightly to the left and she's standing. I just got so mad at the animation that every time they failed to do something that they should have done, I wrote it down, which I'm hoping is going to be as fun for all of you as it was for me. I'm really glad you did that because what happened is I would blink and the character would be where I expected them to be. And I would assume that they had just gotten there via normal method so my note says Cinderella walks in because I looked away from the screen for however long it takes me to blink and when I looked back she was where I thought she should be and I just assumed that she had walked I mean presumably she did walk in but that's not what they showed us yeah no so I'm really glad that you have this information because I do not have that so she's there now we get a scene of random people in the ballroom ooing and eyeing it is the longest scene of people ooing and eyeing ever made they pan very slowly over this crowd of people and it's frozen like most crowd shots are like i'm not mad about that yeah. and they all have their mouths like open and it just goes ooh, ah ooh, she's so ah, pretty says someone in the background ooh, it's ah like that long yeah it's it so long it goes on for a while and then we see the prince oh my god talon would you do the honors? I would love to. He is a beautiful, beautiful young man, I guess. <laughs> he has this long flowing hair. It's brown. Um, he's wearing the same outfit as the prince did in the Disney Cinderella, which is like this white pseudo military outfit with like golden epaulets on his shoulders. Um, and he's wearing white gloves. And he just goes, ah. And he runs to Cinderella while the blonde stepsister he was standing next to makes like a very sour face. He has aerial hair. He has, he has Disney princess hair. They spent more time animating his hair moving than they did giving Cinderella a personality. 100%. He looks different from Cinderella when he stands next to her in that she's blonde and he's brunette and he is taller than her. Other than that, they look very similar. Look, if we're going to go back to the wispy Russian Cinderella, but if you told me that this was a queen from a neighboring country who had had to disguise herself as a boy to save her husband from jail. Which is a cartoon that I've made love watch. And was now stuck in this bizarre scenario pretending to be a guy who is so beautiful that all the women are now in love with. I would be with you 100% because that is what's happening. This is a feminine prince. This is a very femme prince. I'm not, I don't have a problem with it. I think he's actually quite lovely. Well, until we get to his personality, but until we'll get we there. Get to his personality. But again, in this movie, there are no personalities. And Oh no, the prince has a definite personality. I posit that the prince's personality is just jerk. Because what he does is he goes, ah, and he comes over to Cinderella and she goes, your highness. And then she sort of, I guess we're supposed to believe she's curtsying, but what happens is she just kind of bobs at him. And then he announces simply lovely as if talking not to Cinderella. Like he doesn't say you're lovely. He just goes simply lovely, shall we? And reaches out a hand and just like takes her hands. And then there is a scene that is again, clearly meant to be dancing. It cuts to a conductor guy with this mustache and this wig, and he looks so happy, and he's, like, moving his baton around, but the music didn't change. Like, mm -hmm. it makes it look like the music started when they held hands, but it didn't. It's the same, like, string music that's been going on in the background this whole time. Yeah. So I think they just wanted to show us another person's face so they didn't have to animate dancing more than they did. So I'm not an animator. I've never 
I've done illustration and I've certainly never done animation. But it looks like what happened here was that they just had the background move around them. Like they just moved the background up and down and back and forth while various arms were raised and lowered. Is that what happened? That's what I saw. I, okay. I like that they moved the arms because they could have made them just hold hands and then move them up and down. It was one step above the slow dance you do in middle school, okay? It was one step above that in terms of dancing. At one point, the prince holds Cinderella's hand up with his so that she can like do a spin, but they don't animate her doing a spin. No, no, they don't. And then they put the hands down. The king and queen are watching and the king says, what a lovely girl. It looks like my son has already fallen for her. And then the queen says, well, I think she's very nice. And the king goes, so do I, my dear. And I'm wondering, like, why? Based on what? It's the way she said, ooh, your highness. The, the higher someone speaks, the nicer they are. I hate this. I hate that. So, okay. We talked about the prince and Cinderella being, like, very visually similar. Cinderella and the stepsisters are also very visually similar. And the stepsisters are not ugly. Like, They're just... no one is animated to look ugly. The queen is animated like all the other girls, but just has, like, two more lines on her face so that you know she's older same with the stepmother she has a more severe hairstyle but again just the two lines to around the mouth to indicate that she's older even if they're doing this only based on beauty where she's the most beautiful girl at the ball like i don't even buy that like i don't she's not not at all she's not like any prettier than anybody else yeah because they're all just anime drawn and so they're all very pretty it's just Look at this room full of very visually similar pretty people. Okay. Pick one. I don't know. Uh, That one. Except the prince definitely, like, had a reaction to her and walked away from the stepsister to go, like, dance with her. So clearly he saw something in Cinderella. Maybe he was like, oh my goodness, you like the 1950s Disney Cinderella cartoon too? I can't believe we both showed up in cosplay to the same event. This is clearly meant to be. Oh, that's such a better movie. So the stepsisters are fussing. The blonde says, where did she come from? And Red goes, and it was my turn to dance too. And then the voiceover, which sounds very different now. I think it's still supposed to be the fairy godmother, but it sounds very different. So when she first spoke, when she first said poor Cinderella and Cinderella reacted to her voice, the narrator sounded like the narrator and the fairy godmother also sounded like the narrator. But then when the fairy godmother kept on talking, it sounded like the narrator doing an old lady voice. I do think it's the same person doing it. Yeah. But they don't sound the same anymore. Yeah. So I think it's clearly supposed to be the fairy godmother, but it sounds like a different voiceover and it frustrated me. And the voiceover says, apart from these three guests, everyone admired Cinderella's beauty. Cinderella was so happy dancing with the prince that she completely forgot the time. Okay. So... While the narration says this, and like, I hate how much it focuses on beauty as like the end all be all, but whatever. It shows like the cheering crowd and it's just like people like being so excited that the prince is dancing with Cinderella and they look like a crowd of fans at a sporting event. Like there's a guy like pumping his fist into the air. I mean, we've established that trying to marry a royal is like a sport. sport. (laughs) We've established this. We need to come up with a name for this sport. So uh, we see the clock now. It's five minutes till midnight, but it starts chiming midnight anyways. Even though the clock clearly says- Well, because it takes so long to chime midnight that you have to start early. They start at 11.55. And then while the clock is ringing, it moves into 11.57. And several chimes in, Cinderella goes, oh no, I'm sorry, but- And she slowly walks away. Okay, so here are my notes for this scene. I guess we're done animating now. We're only doing pictures, fine. Because what happens is there's a slow pan onto like just the face of Cinderella and the prince and they're not moving anymore. And then there's a slow zoom. It's like the Ken Burns effect that they do in documentaries where they have a still image 
but they kind of pan in into the side. So they do that on the couple. And then they do that on the picture of her glass slippers. And then they show us a shot of the clock. And then they show us a shot, just still shot of Cinderella's face smiling. Then a still shot of the prince's face smiling. And then a still shot of the clock in which the only animated thing is the hand moving. And then we get Cinderella gasping and just standing there with a frozen expression while the prince is like, what's the matter? Yeah. And then she's like, oh no. So she walks slowly away from the prince. And it's walks, so slow. This is the slowest speed chase I've ever seen. And walks slowly down the stairs, gently slips out of one shoe, calmly says, oh no, and calmly walks away. We hear running footsteps as though the prince is somehow chasing her. But guys, I want to emphasize, this is a sedate stroll. This woman is strolling. This woman is ambling. So the prince is standing there with his hand outstretched going, princess. And then we pan away and we hear as though he might be running, but they don't show us anyone running. No. And then the next shot is like the shoe by itself and it zooms in on it. And then the prince picks it up. And then he just stands there with his mouth open. And we see the carriage driving away quickly and the voiceover tells us what we just saw, which is that Cinderella managed to leave. Right. Like she leaves in her carriage. She doesn't run away on foot. Yeah. And then the voiceover tells us, but the prince can stop himself thinking about Cinderella. And we see the prince in the daytime the next day. In a new outfit. In a new outfit. And says, she must be here somewhere. And he looks at the shoe and he goes, well, I'll find her. He's also like serving his kingdom off a balcony yeah. and they show us like a very lovely background shot of just like the village again. It is. It's very pretty. I would like to live in that village. That seems like a really nice village. And then the narration says, and so the prince decided to make Cinderella his wife, no matter how difficult it was to find her. And the voiceover continues to tell us that he has ordered soldiers to find the girl who fits the shoe but no one did. And we get the worst shoe montage. It's a really bad one. We see that there's like a new carriage and there's a glass slipper on a blue pillow inside. And then like there's two guys that I guess are soldiers, but they don't really look like soldiers. They look like just courtier types. Yeah. They look like a seneschal or somebody. Uh, I don't know. They're wearing like very nice clothes for soldiers if they are. Doesn't look like soldiers. And so we see one foot try to put the shoe on but the girl doing it is also blonde and she looks exactly like both cinderella and the blonde stepsister so i was like oh are we cutting straight to cinderella is this where we are in the film it was Mm -hmm. not and then we cut to a village green where there are a bunch of paper doll cutouts of people swaying back and forth on the green while there's murmur 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 going on in the background Mm -hmm. and that's our shoe montage that is the extent of the shoe montage that we get I just want to know, like, which is it? Did you round up all the eligible young women in the village green and make them try on a shoe? Because we've seen that. Or did you go door to door? Because you're making it sound like you went door to door. Well, and then we find out that they do indeed go door to door because they eventually go to Cinderella's house, where Cinderella and all this family is. What was happening on the village green? Was that just like a everybody nearby come and we'll try to knock this out in groups? I mean, there's only one shoe, so, like, what's the point of showing us two different methods? I mean, they could just build a giant pyramid in the town square and have everyone... It is the most efficient way to handle this. I think it is, although the conveyor belt was useful, too. I think a conveyor belt (laughs) is a good way to do a shoe montage. But this was weird. So, they get to Cinderella's house. Blondie goes first. She can't put the shoe on. I have this... way back in the doorway just kind of holding onto the door and looking mournfully it is as close as she comes to making an expression i have this dude down as foot tester why not this is the role played by the grand duke in the 1950s one so this is that character this is the most british man in all of existence (laughs) it is and he goes right well your foot's just too big who's next and stepmother tells red Now, whatever you have to do, just get your foot into that slipper. And Red goes, right, mother, very conspiratorially. But she doesn't try anything. She just tries very hard to watch her foot in. And it's the same animation as 
every other time the foot tester again goes nope your your foot's too big too <laughs> i'm afraid your foot's too big as well he's had to he's had to break this news to a it's, lot of people he's really a pro good. at it this is also the first time that we've had anyone tell anyone that their feet are too big we are always told that the shoe is too small or that their feet don't fit this is the first time we've actually had someone be like your feet are massive go away so red goes wait a moment i'm just not putting it on right and then like we see the stepmother with like angry fists and then she tries harder but it's the same animation but now there's just more like audio of her grunting harder and then they add like squeaky glass sounds to it yeah, and, which is and, the worst thing anyone's ever done in a cinderella movie yeah and like pain wincing sounds she it's it's the sounds are uncomfortable in this moment so the, he goes it's no good i'm afraid haven't you got any other daughters again i love the haven't you got any other daughter line when we get this and the stepmother says no just these two and the footman looks around and goes ah hmm you over there you come try the shoe on <laughs> and then we see cinderella standing in the doorway the same way with her hands like in the doorway but now her mouth is open in this giant grin and she looks ecstatic and it's weird it is and the stepmother that's a great impersonation that you're doing i'm so sad that this is a visual media <laughs> it's and just so, for you so the stepmother races over and sort of throws her arms out and goes what this dirty girl you actually think that she went to the ball and the foot tester says something along the lines of our orders were that we try every girl so she comes and she sits and she puts the shoe on and it fits there are i have sounds of confusion okay so there's surprised gasps and then happy gasps from the soldiers so it goes kind of like oh huh? and then oh uh, and then there's shock gasps from the stepsisters and the stepmother. And then the soldier goes, so you were the girl that night, which is a weird line for the soldier to have. And Cinderella goes, yes. And then clasps her hands to her chest. And the stepmother goes, no, it's impossible. And then the fairy godmother, who's there now in the doorway, goes, yes, it's all true. Bam. Okay, you say she's in the doorway. We have no way of knowing that because they just do a close up of her face and the background behind her is dark. So you have no way of knowing where she is. I, for one, imagined that we were looking at her through the window and she was standing outside. Sure, why not? So she puts Cinderella in the same dress. She's, Cinderella is still in her brown shoes, which is how I know they reused that bit of animation. Oh, yeah. And she says, come on, Cinderella, go to the palace. This time the magic is blessed, so it will last after midnight. And Cinderella goes, oh, thank you. What does that mean? What does that mean? I don't know. Like, why? Who has blessed it? Maybe she bought the paid subscription where you get add-ons. And why does it matter at this point? All the magic is doing is putting her in a fancy dress and an updo. Like, I don't know. I like, don't... she doesn't need that to be permanent. She just needs to get to the palace. Can she never change out of that dress? I was going to say, do you think that means that she has to wear that dress forever? Something to ponder. Anyway, the voiceover then goes, and that was the end of all Cinderella's unhappy suffering. And she began her new life as the prince's wife. I and hate it that. fades I hate to that. Cinderella and the prince holding hands in the courtyard and kind of pans up the castle to a blue sky and then fades to black and that's it. I hate that. I hate that they announced that she's going to be the prince's wife. Not even the princess. Literally Not even the, the princess. princess's wife. Literally defined entirely by him. She doesn't get her own rank. She doesn't get in. I hated that. I hated that. And that he specifically picked her because she was the most beautiful girl at the ball. That's not implied. That's, that's stated. That's not subtext. That's just text. And also, he didn't even go looking for her himself. He sent out a bunch of soldiers. Okay, but we've seen that in a number of Cinderella's where the prince I know, and himself. every time I'm like, why? No, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. It's wrong. It, it shouldn't be that way. Because, okay, 
So from a storytelling point of view, that means that she got to have an interaction with the soldier. Like Cinderella spoke to the soldier about the same as she spoke to the prince, like the, the same amount of time. And we could have had that moment with the prince where he's like, it was you at the ball. And she goes, yes. Like, why did that happen with the soldier? I, I wish I could explain this. I wish I had the answer. We also never see them kiss and we don't see them get married because she's wearing her red dress at the end when she's standing holding hands with the prince. It's just not very romantic. It's not. There was not a lot of romance in this. He never even kissed her hand, like nothing. I found this gross on a lot of fronts. Not egregiously gross, like some of the gross racist ones that we've watched, but mm-hmm. just, ew. Uh, ugh. It was like a bleak universe where everything was transactional and the prince is like a jerk who just wants to marry the most beautiful girl. Magic is arbitrary. I would watch a version based on this that like really leaned into the darker elements. Again, we've established we are down for watching gritty, dark Cinderella's. If you want to lean into the upsetting and troubling aspects of a Cinderella, please do. That sounds interesting. But it's really unpleasant for me when there's a very dark undertone and it's just pastels on top of it. Mm-hmm. And I don't like that. If you're going to be gritty and dark, just to, just be honest, just admit it. Just don't lie to me. It's all I want. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. It just becomes like insidious. It, it's just this weird creeping discomfort. Yes. Ugh. Ugh is right. All right. So do you have highs and lows for this? Thing? I do. Okay. What are your highs and lows? Okay. Don't laugh, but I actually really enjoyed the dancing scene Ugh. where the prince and Cinderella were dancing because it was incredibly stilted and it looked like really janky, but the background disappeared into the like pink blurry background and it was such a classic anime move that I was kind of like into it. Ugh. I right. also like the sound effects of the transformation and how there was like a poof with like gas and like clouds of billowing red and orange smoke and then like the 80s sound effect I don't know I thought it was kind of charming all right those (laughs) oh my god like everything else everything else (laughs) I like the animation the shortcuts they took in animation at the cost of characterization yeah no I can't argue with that Because it would have gone such a long way if we had seen Cinderella doing literally anything at any point. And and we just never did because they only gave us like still face shots of her. Yeah. With no emoting other than like the twinkle in her eyes. Yeah, there's a limited amount to which eye twinkling can really carry the scene. It can't do the heavy lifting is what I'm saying. I liked it in that shot with the crescent moon where she was like looking out her window. Like that was okay. They used it to tell us that her clothes were raggedy, but they really could have used that for something emotionally impactful. Yeah. Agreed. So how about you? What are your highs and lows? Okay. My low is definitely that she becomes the prince's wife. Oh, I was so. I was thinking, because I think about the highs and lows while we watch this, and I was definitely going with, oh, my low is her voice. I hate her voice. I cannot stand her voice. Her voice is the worst. And then we get to the last five seconds, and she goes, the prince's wife. And I was like, all right, new low. I liked the backdrops a lot. I liked the way the castle was drawn. I liked the I didn't like the village green scene, but I liked the pan panning shots of the village itself. I thought that that was really lovely. Yeah, the they were really was, nice. The moon was pretty. So I liked a lot of the drawing in this. But, yeah, I didn't have any issues with the drawing, just the animating of it. Yeah, the, the drawing was fine. In fact, it was, it was quite pretty. It was a welcome relief from this high-pitched sound that happened way too often. So what would you change about this movie? What one thing would you change about this movie to make it better? We're limiting this to one. Obviously the answer is the whole thing, but. 
I mean, the easiest thing to change would be Cinderella's voice. Like you yes. just re-record that and you're done. Like that would be simple. But what I would love to see changed is the bit where the prince wants the prettiest girl at the ball. Mm-hmm. He can fall in love at first sight, but like I want a line about that. Mm-hmm. The king and queen can be like, wow, I've never seen him so interested in a girl. Or the prince can be like, I must know who she is. I'm in love with her. Like something, anything. Do you think that it was... So in the in the Mexican Cinderella that we watched, it's specifically well, st- Mexican with quotes. Mexican in the Cinderella one that we watched, the uh, the party is specifically stated with the prince as first prize. Uh huh. First prize is his son. Yes. Do we find that better or worse than the prince is just going to look for the most beautiful one? I, I think it's grosser because historically that's been like more the case with women. Sure. So like the sort of overall vibe is just worse. So also here's my thing. If you're gonna have it be based on beauty, have a beauty pageant. Just do a full on Miss Congeniality. That would be fine. That'd be hilarious. In the Emperor's New Group, Cusco just literally had them all line up and like talked about what I, he nope. didn't like about each one nope hate your hair nope 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 yikes and then he like had to have like a lot of growth but and the prince isn't there yet yeah but like he could have he could have had like a beauty pageant and it would have been exactly the same yeah it wasn't good no it wasn't what would you change i would make the stepsisters and stepmother more evil because they don't do anything evil she gets chores and we're told that stuff has been taken from her and that she has to do chores and doesn't have nice clothes so we see that it is an unfair household but we don't get any relevant information to suggest that this is a deeply upsetting situation and I wanted to feel that Mm -hmm. or please insert the scene with the beautician and the milk baths please I wanted that scene I just wanted like scenes you know instead of like looking at a still picture I would have liked to look at a scene as bad as this was I think it should have been longer I think if this had been instead of 11 and a half minutes if this had been 18 minutes you could have put a couple of more frames in there to establish, I don't know, a story or a plot or literally anything. Yeah, correct. I agree. I, I keep comparing it to the wispy Russian Cinderella. I know I like, like that one a lot because I grew up with it, but at least on that one, they like hit the emotional beats. Oh no, the wispy Russian one is so much better than this. As someone who did not watch the wispy Russian one as a child, it, it's excellent it's it's not traditional american animation because it's from russia but it is self-consistently beautiful it has a very dreamlike quality you get emotional beats that make you feel stuff mm-hmm. and the romance between the prince and cinderella is believable and not problematic yeah so I think the Russian Cinderella is much better than this one. Leagues, miles, much, big. I don't think our listeners should watch this. Do you think our listeners should watch this? You guys aren't missing anything. Like, there's nothing, there's no reason to watch this. It's not very funny. It's not very interesting. And, like, it's not good animation. It's just kind of not very good. (sighs) So, Liv, what's your final grade? I mean... It, it is a Cinderella. It has all the necessary pieces of a Cinderella. I like that it had a lizard. Mm-hmm. Um, so D plus. Because mm. the prince was really pretty. I liked his hair. <laughs> and the drawing he had very was, nice hair. And the drawing was lovely. So yeah, D plus for the lizard, the prince, and the backgrounds. The lizard, the prince in the background sounds like a Narnia book. 
somebody falls through a backdrop of a play and finds themselves in an enchanted world where everyone is lizards. I think that's a Doctor Who episode. It is a Doctor Who episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What about you? What grade would you give this thing? Uh, just like straight up D. Yeah. Like I didn't enjoy any of it. Like there was nothing in it that I found like very charming or anything. Mm. And like I did like laugh a couple times, but it wasn't for the right reasons. Yeah. If, if you accidentally screw up into a laugh, that doesn't you don't get points for that yeah so I mean you pass you you did the Cinderella um congratulations I guess that's that's all I got <laughs> yeah well it's almost midnight so thanks for joining us if you like this episode please leave us a rating or a review we'd love to hear from you so follow us at cinderpod on twitter and instagram like our Facebook page or email us at the Cinderella podcast at gmail.com. If you want bibbity bobbity bonus episodes or to hear us discuss this week's Cinderella again, but with more adult beverages in the ever after party, please support us at patreon.com slash cinderpod. Our intro music is Bad Ideas by Kevin McLeod. You can find him at incompetech.com. So Liv, what are we watching next week? Next week, we will be watching the 1976 classic the slipper and the rose i'm so pumped about this this is actually one of the classic cinderellas that i had not heard of until i was compiling lists of cinderellas and it makes it into a bunch of the top 10 lists which makes me deeply troubled that i have never heard of it before so i am beyond pumped to watch this i think I it's going to be great genuinely i think this is going to be a good movie next week so i'm, I'm very excited i am cautiously optimistic so until next time, we hope you have a happily ever after.